Hello and welcome Tino here and today we are going to be talking about Standard of Living 19.1 We are playing as Argentina and as you can see we are rank number one in Standard of Living Standard of Living, yes, Standard of Living and we are a few points above the top countries like France and Great Britain we did just that in six years. We are going to go back in. If you take a look here, standard of living 14.7, and the year is about uh, 1918. So about six years earlier, five points less. So about one point per year. First, I'm going to tell you what not to do because I'm kind of the community is arguing that the path to have a high standard of living is the following. For example, you have this company and if you increase the price of the output good and decrease the price of the input good, you are going to be raising the earnings of the company. And if you raise the earnings of the company, you are going to be earning the wages. And therefore, higher wages means higher standard of living. In my opinion, that is wrong. So far, I'm the only one because I say that if you increase the output of this price, you are putting into trouble the company that uses this input and if you lower the price of this good you are going to be putting into trouble the company that produces for example steel also many of the output goods are consumer goods so by increasing the price of the output good of many factories you are going to be damaging the price of the consumer goods and therefore you are increasing the wages but at the same time damaging the standard of living. Let's go back to standard of living in Victoria 3. In Victoria 3 you have three stratas, lower strata, middle and higher, higher strata or upper strata. If you mouse over you are going to see which shops belong to which strata. Aristocrat and capitalist are in the higher strata and let's take a look at the lower strata and you're going to be finding here clerks, farmer, peasants, servicemen and so on. Our important concept ex is expected standard of living and this is the number here expected standard of living is 11.4 and the actual standard of living in average is 15.5 so if a person from the lower strata is below this number they are going to feel unhappy but as you can see, the capitalists, they feel only happy and the aristocrats if they are above 25.0 and they are in average very rich, rich actually 45.8. If they are below this number, they turn themselves into radicals after hours. Also, how is the standard of living calculated? The standard of living is basically the revenue of the person minus the expensive and in the expensive you will include all they consume plus the taxes that is very important and you can see that also here if you mouse over for example this one is specific to the lower strata you're going to be seeing that the number about uh, is this number 17 percent is below the expected standard of living we must fix that and also they are paying 4.7 above average the consumer good that they use they pay 7.7 .7 in taxes and you can see here also that the most expensive good that they are paying is clothes 18.6 so a quick fix will be to be build more close or have close more accessible to the lower strata and a super super important number is the peasant 3.5 of the population are peasant this number should be always below one close to zero and it's now high because we just incorporated a few provinces who are peasants? Peasants are the guys that work in the subsistence farms and subsistence anything. You click there, you click here, and down you're going to be finding that those are the peasants. We have 6.7k, a lot, in this province, and we must fix that. The subsistence farms are the only buildings that use peasants, and they are super unproductive. They produce a very little amount of everything, but very little so they are super inefficient and as i said standard of living is about building 
with efficiency and high productivity. Another way to find the peasants, it's very difficult for me because you know I need to click province by province, is let's say that a clothes factory that you can build anywhere, textile mills, and you mouse over this number and you're going to be seeing all the employees there and I don't see peasants, let's go to this one. And I see here peasants, a lot of peasants, 60k, and we must fix this. So this province is one that we should work quite soon. It's a new province, that's the reason because we have peasants there. But we should build as soon as possible this province to get rid of those peasants and get and give them decent job. Take a look at the wages of the peasants, 0.09. A standard farmer on a wheat farm instead of 0 0.09 makes uh, 1.7 so far 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 more as I said to have super high standard of living is not about prices it's not about wages it's about to have high efficiency high productivity and where is that is this number here throughput 27 for example, if you have 27 factories of this type, you're going to be having a throughput of 27. That is the when you pile up buildings on the same province. If you pile up, let's say, 10, 10 factories here, you're going to be having a 10% boost, and that is a lot. Why? Because the benefits are usually very marginal. So having a surplus, a throughput bonus of 27 is massive. And take a look at why we have 20 because we have on our pocket the trade union and seven because we have seven buildings there so we have a nice mass, mass production there seven buildings but the big part here is the trade union boost so if you take a look at the farmers they are also loyal and we are getting both bonus from them we have 10% bonus in farms, in everything agricultural, 10%. That means that basically any building starts as a level 10 building just from the start. And we also have this nice bonus. And we have happy people in all the factions. We have loyal, loyal, loyal. And the industrials are the only ones that are not loyal. They are just happy. But we collect tons of bonus productivity from all the factions. Another very important aspect is technology. Technology makes the building more efficient. To increase the wage, you don't want an output good expensive. You want to produce tons and tons of that good so you can produce cheap goods have cheap input and cheap output but it's going to be super productive because you're going to have few people that will produce tons and tons of good and therefore you're going to be having super high wages and to be super ahead of time you need to have all the bonuses that the faction gives you 20 percent 20 percent all in research and you have should have the top amount of university that you can have that it's in form in the technology you're going to be see how many universities you can put and you should put there the maximum amount of investment so you are up to date in the method of method of so as you can see to have a high standard of living you need to have your population happy population happy means that you're going to receive a lot of bonuses and those bonuses include a 20% boost to your industrial factories and 20% boost means like starting with a level 20 factory just from the start and that makes very easy to reach 19 points but now you have the question how to make so many loyalists as you can see we have mm, about 9 million out of 26 million and those lo loyalists are making all the factions loyal answer is here if you mouse over my legitimacy 100 means that i'm a righteous government between 90 and 100 you are righteous and that gives me about 186k loyalist per month so about 2 million a year and also boost the loyalists from increasing the standard of living plus other things. And how to have 100% legitimacy? Well, you only need about 80, and you can have usually 80 if we go, you go with this law, 
and then you apply low taxes why because low taxes gives you among other things gives you a 20 percent legitimacy and also having low taxes increases your standard of living because you are waging on the people less taxes so they just have to spend in consumer goods and also you can increase the salaries to the max of all your your workers so you are increasing the standard of living of all your population and as the time passes by you're going to be seeing that your people is buying more expensive goods and therefore your economy will start growing too and also your money income the production in my nation is quite good you don't need to stop the production 900 and as you can see the income is still very good despite i'm having no taxes and if you enjoyed this video so far please leave a like a comment a subscribe and that's basically all i can think of all that in, in improves your efficiency your production efficiency go for it don't worry too much about wages because they are just relative worry about productivity and efficiency and everything will sort out after that thanks for watching and see you in the next one if you have any question i will do my best to help see you